It's time for This Week in WordPress, episode number 178, entitled No Fish. It was recorded on Monday the 13th of September 2021. My name's Nathan Wrigley and I'm joined this week by my co-host Paul Lacey as well as Joe Casabona. As always there's a lot of news to talk about each week and this week is no different. We briefly discuss WordPress's new release 5.8.1 before going on very briefly to talk about 5.9 and some proposed changes. We then get into why Automatic has acquired the Social Image Generator plugin and then we talk about an exciting initiative which you can link to your easy digital downloads checkout system to plant some trees when people buy your products. We also talk about page builders speeding up their sites, specifically Bricks and Divi have announced new updates to the way that they display pages and hopefully less bloat in any pages you make with them. And we also talk about cookies and whether cookie banners are all getting a bit much. And then we're on to picks of the week, most notably a fabulous service uncovered by Joe called Zip Message. It's all coming up next on This Week in WordPress. This Week in WordPress was brought to you by AB Split Test. Do you want to set up your AB Split Test in record time? The new AB Split Test plugin for WordPress will have you up and running in a couple of minutes. Use your existing pages and test anything against anything else. Buttons, images, headers, rows, anything. And the best part is that it works with Elementor, Beaver Builder and the WordPress block editor. Go check it out and get a free demo at absplittest.com. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome, Joe Casabona. Welcome, Paul Lacey. Number 178 of the This Week in WordPress show. Uh, do this every Monday, 2 p.m. UK time. Um, Paul, are you going to do the introductions today? We're supposed to have, I should say, we're supposed to have um, another guest, but um, Matt Cromwell isn't here just yet. But fingers crossed that at some point in the next hour or so, he'll, uh, he'll drop in. And if he does, we'll just dump him right into the conversation. But uh, as always, Paul Lacey's here. Mm-hmm. How are you doing? Do you have a nice weekend, Paul? <laughs> Awful. It's rubbish, actually. <laughs> it's a total waste of time. Um, a friend of mine, Nathan Wrigley, booked a weekend away for uh, he and I and some of our friends from Big Orange Big Orange Heart. And it's actually, no, it's really, really good. And uh, we hadn't, a lot of us hadn't seen each other for a long time. And um, we you know, took advantage of the, the fact that the UK is relatively unlocked as such and we were able to go to um the coast up north and it was really cool and we had a we had a great time beers we watched the um uh new uh british tennis champion win the us open which was absolutely amazing in the pub we watched that in the pub and also i mean should we just bring it up now nathan (laughs) go on yeah we were gonna go we were all gonna go fishing on was it the saturday yeah yeah i should say saturday the 11th saturday 11 a.m yeah 11 a.m booked yeah so it but nathan accidentally booked it for november the 11th (laughs) so we just did what we did for the rest of the weekend and just went to the pub and then you know and actually nathan felt very bad about it but yeah. honestly none of us none of us minded we all had a bit of a hangover to be quite fair from the previous yeah. night and going out on the waves <laughs> catching slimy fish i don't think any of us were too worried about it mate so don't worry but we all had a great weekend and thank you very much nathan for organizing it and hope to do it again next year before I before we get on to Joe, it's one of those moments where you really wish the ground would swallow you up because we were all sitting having some food and we were supposed to, within about five minutes, go to the place where the, the, the fishing boat was that was going to take us on. And I just thought, well, I'll just open up the email and just, just check, you know, just to make sure that we're in the right place and so on. And I opened it up and the first thing I saw was the word November. I'm like, that's got to be a mistake. That has, Please make that a mistake. And it wasn't. Mm. I booked it three months into the future but uh anyway yeah. my favorite are. part was your excuse though that apparently when he was <laughs> typing the word october it must have auto completed to november well even though it was so in September. Were doomed, whatever <laughs> even if you got it you know in your mind right we still wouldn't have been there for another month yeah but, um it was great and we did a lot of walking along the beach and uh and um found found a crab didn't we 
Yes. And uh, some fossils. It was cool. It was really nice just connecting with people in the real world again. Um, It's the first chance that I've had to do anything like that. Yeah, missed it. it Apparently, WordCamp Bristol is coming back fairly soon, as are a couple of other uh, events um, in the near future. So maybe maybe that'll just be the first of many this year. But do you want to introduce our fabulous guest, Joe? I certainly will. I certainly will. So welcome back, Joe. And uh, Joe here started his career almost 20 years ago, when I guess he must have been about three years old, because look how young he looks, (laughs) as a freelance web developer before realizing his true passion, which is sharing his years of knowledge, which he does have, about website development, podcasting, and online courses. And uh, today, his main focus is helping people make money with podcasting. And what's your um, what's the best web address for you these days, Joe? Uh, well, Casabonin.org is where all of my stuff is, but the mm. podcast specific stuff is at podcastliftoff.com. I've done that course, and uh, it actually helped me launch a podcast. Um, you, you which will I quickly see Paul Lacey's wonderful yeah. face uh, on on the homepage as a testimonial. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a great course, and and you know I, I'm a co-host of this show, so I don't know what Nathan did to set it up at the beginning, and I didn't know. Oh, it was a lot of honestly yeah. a lot of messing around, and yeah. a lot of blind alleys, and a lot of mistakes, and a lot of things yeah. that I wish I'd done differently because I just didn't have the the bandwidth. So go and yeah, Joe's course, go and do Joe's course. <laughs> just don't waste your time. It's just those gaps of knowledge that you might yeah. you might know 50% of the stuff and it's just like, okay, that two minute video there just saved me three days of getting it wrong. So yeah, check it out. It's a good course. Awesome. Great course. In fact. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. You you honestly, Joe, and I'm not trying to be like some kind of sycophant, you do look a lot younger than you are. Thank you. Uh, like, I, I I'm all wrinkly. That. By the time I was your age, I was like <laughs> wrinkly, and you're not. Maybe you've got a dead good filter on your camera. It's really know. good. It's really good. <laughs> so it's just perfect lighting in here. Um, thank yeah, you. you. I'll I, I'll attribute that to um, I don't know. Probably my like a greasy Italian skin. Maybe yeah. that's keeping the wrinkles away. That'll do. That'll I do. I mean, I'm about to have a third kid in December, so. Uh, that'll that oh, it's gonna go downhill yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually strangely enough the third kid was what made this yeah. go from black to, <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes i'll uh, mm-hmm. just very quickly a few few of the sort of captiony type things if you are wishing to comment then and you're in the facebook group then you have to click on well you don't click on the url i, I don't know if it's a clickable link but go to chat.restream.io forward slash fb if you want to be de-anonymized otherwise you will be anonymous and we won't know who you are And if you've got any questions or just general commentary, um, then please just add it as a comment and we'll throw it on the screen at an appropriate time if there is an appropriate time. Like I said, we're hoping to get Matt Cromwell on, but who knows? Maybe that'll happen. Maybe that. No, he's uh, he sent me a message. So basically, if we can wish Matt Cromwell to get well soon, he's feeling a bit under the weather. Okay. uh, He sends his apologies to everyone. And uh, you know, if you're watching Matt, um, get well. Yeah, get well soon. Yeah. Oh dear. I hope hope he's feeling better soon. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll carry on. We'll put the screen up and just say this is the WP Builds website. We do this every week uh, on a Monday and we put it out on a Tuesday and we've got a podcast which comes out on a Thursday and you can always catch the latest episode at the top here. And if you fancy keeping in touch with what we do, click on our little subscribe link there and fill out one of these forms or follow us on Facebook by clicking these links and all of that kind of good stuff. Let's cut to the news. I think we're going to rip through a fair amount of this pretty quickly because a lot of it's just, it's a it's a question of news I feel I've got to cover off, but it, there's not really a lot of stuff to say. So we'll just quickly dive through a bit of this. WordPress 5.8.1 rolled over during the course of the last week. Hopefully all of your sites, you sent you emails to say, this has all happened automatically. You didn't need to do anything, but it was basic a little security update. I don't know if you've switched all of this kind of automatic updating off, but it's probably a good idea because there are, I think I counted 60 bugs. Yeah, yeah, there it is. 60 bugs um, in addition to three security fixes. And because it's a security release, it is recommended that you fix things immediately because obviously the bad guys now know what those problems were and presumably will be looking to exploit them. I am Almost certain that both Joe and Paul have nothing to say about this. I'll just pause for a second in case they do. 
but they don't. That's probably to be expected. Great. Okay. In which case, we'll go on to this one, which is uh, 5.9. It's an article on WP Tavern by Sarah Gooding. Um, and it's all about the roadmap of the near future. I know for a fact, Paul, you're getting a bit sick of talking about 5.9 um, and updates and full site editing and all of that kind of stuff. But it is just I love today. It. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah. do. You I get do. triggered, but I still <laughs> love doing it. You know? I watch, you know, I like to watch horror films as well. You yeah. Know? <laughs> they scare me as well. But, well, well I, 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 yeah, go on. <laughs> no, you, 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 you carry on. Go on. I was just going to say, uh, I, I really think they they've probably figured out that they need to get this full site editing thing out there um so that so that there's not a you know just a reliance on something like toolset which is currently one of the only ways you can there's probably some others that I don't know about but it's it's more or less the only way that I'm aware of to do proper full site um development where you've got things like archive views and single post templates so that you know, you can design one template for all your blog posts. You can design a template for your search results, your 404, etc., and um, and get that done. And I, I'm I'm sure that it won't be perfect when it it comes out. Uh, more more than sure that it won't be perfect. But I think they need to they need to get that um, that over the line, and then and then I think that's something that's probably been pushing a lot of the development that to some people feels like why are they focusing on that and i think it comes down to they need to get this particular thing out and then perhaps with i don't know what do we have after 5.9 5, 5 do we well, have 5. i would six? imagine yeah it, 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 i i think six but i yeah, could I be wrong about that yeah, yeah um yeah. yeah i mean i imagine then we might start seeing the the focus on backfilling some of the sort of things that aren't working quite as well as they could or performance and stuff like that so um I, i'm going to be relieved when they get this one done and and then I, i'm really interested to see what they they do next but it i do get a sense that they're on the um whenever i hear josepha or or read josepha writing about you know their sort of deadlines and everything i feel that there is like an urgency to it now for sure wherever that wherever that comes from but I think that they're going to bring it out and then third parties can start iterating on that. And there's a bunch of other things coming out in 5.9 as well that I think theme developers really, really need and are desperate to uh, get their hands on as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Get past this one and then see what the next version looks like is is my thought on it. I imagine, Joe, you've probably delved into this a lot deeper than I have because I know you follow the, uh, the full site editing stuff. You think you've got a course about it as well, um, as far as I remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, master full site editing. It's again, it's pretty early, right? I rolled it out kind yep. of at the same time of 5.8, which is when the first full site editing features came uh, to core. But I've been working with it. Uh, it is it's it's buggy right now. I've I've participated in the full site editing kind of team chats when I could. Uh, those are run by uh, I'll say friend of the show Anne McCarthy, right? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's this She's is where great. I met her. And um and so, you know, they've been really open about, um, you know, getting things fixed and, and things like that. And so this will be a big push. They're doing they're doing something similar to 5.8, right, where I think about two months before the release date, uh, they're going to do a go, no go on specific features. And then uh, they'll do a feature freeze a month later. This is appropriate development, right? I think in the past with WordPress releases we haven't had what i would uh as a software developer myself consider appropriate feature uh releases where um features should be frozen in the beta period the beta period is not a time for adding new features this is the beta is for bug fixes or should be for bug fixes only and then the release candidate should be pretty polished um in the past, we haven't seen that with WordPress. We've had new features added to release candidates. So um, I think that this path that that Josepha has laid out is much more appropriate. And I think it's necessary considering the major changes that we're going to see with full site editing. 
One of the um, one of the things that I'm curious about is that we seem to have a new role that's been invented as well because it seems like the the, the release lead is going to be Matt Mullenweg. That's been the case for quite a few releases of late. Josepha is going to be marketing lead, and Jonathan Bossinger um, he's not he's not been on this particular show, but he's been on our podcast. Um, he's been invited to take on the, a new role. I think it's a new role called technical writer. And the job of that is to create, uh, sorry, to get the technical details of the new releases translated into accessible and actionable information for other contributor teams, which seems like quite a curious step. I'm presuming it's because there's so much complexity coming out in this one that it would be good that everybody knew exactly what the page was that we were all on. Um, but anyways, the, the goal is to get this out by the end of this year, and you can have a little look. It's the usual stuff that we've been banging on about over the last yeah. few months. Yeah. I, I will add, I think that this new role uh, is probably a good and important one. Jonathan works for uh, Castos, if I'm not mistaken, right? He, no, he did work for Castos. He's now at, I'm going to get it wrong. It's totally escaped me. I want to say... Is it? Please liquid, say it. Not brains. Fingy brains, what are they called? It's liquid delicious brains. brains. It delicious, delicious brains. Brain. Yeah. Liquid oh, brains. Oh, Sorry. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Too many zombie um, films. Sorry. Yeah, delicious brains. <laughs> liquid brains. <laughs> yeah. That's the ought to be a company um, call. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I think this role is a good one, right? Because I um I think a really valuable skill to have is this is the skill of being able to translate developer speak into normal person speak right um yeah. and because there are so many contributor teams now uh and nathan like you said um it's really complex i th i i feel like maybe this is another evolution in in the wordpress open source uh environment right where i think for a long time people thought contributing was just about writing code yeah, and it's not yeah. really like that anymore but it's still it's still very developer centric. And so uh, hopefully Jonathan's role will make it less developer centric. I don't want he to actually, read React in any of his documentation. No, no, <laughs> yeah. he, uh, he actually came on our podcast, like I said, a long time ago, probably like three or four years ago, because he noticed that David and I had made an absolute pig's ear of explaining the GPL. And so he wrote to me and said, look, can oh, we just yeah. do a show where I just tell you how it actually is? And so that's what we did. And he did. He managed in 40 minutes to explain how the GPL actually works, which is really difficult to understand. And yeah. he, did a, he did a really good job yeah. of it. So he's hopefully... He yeah, hopefully. even more so, right? Because that hasn't been challenged in the courts. So. No, no, he made that very point. Yeah, yeah. Hope, that it, uh, <laughs> hope that it stand that has has water tightness. Yeah, but there you go. Go and have a read of that. That's um, Sarah Gooding, WP Tavern. I thought this one was quite interesting. We seen we've seen a whole bunch of things being acquired. Of le oh, sorry. Before I go on to the next one, um, thanks, Joe. Joe put the version numbering for WordPress. There's a link on the page. I'll put it in the show notes if I remember. Yeah, and uh, it looks like it does go to. 0.9 and then the next point release, you know, 4.1, 5.1 and so on. So yeah, looks like we're heading for six after 5.9. Okay, next one back on WP Tavern again, Sarah Gooding. We mentioned this, Paul. Do you remember having this on the show a yep. little while ago and thinking this was a really, really good idea? Quite unusually, yeah. it got out of the gate and I think it was premium only. There was no way of getting this from the repo. Yes. But it's a, in fact, Joe, you might have been on the show talking about this. I have a memory that we talked about it anyway. Um, and it's, a, it's an image generator where you can kind of take an image um, and make it into a featured image, but kind of put memes on it, put text over the top, move the text left, mm -hmm. put fonts on, put different opacities and things. Basically, it just makes social sharing cards inside of your WordPress installation. I would never have put this as an automatic acquire, but there you go. They've bought it for an undisclosed amount. And the, the theory that Sarah's putting forward here is that it's going to be rolled up into Jetpack. Um, and, and I love it. I don't buy it because I've got a bit of software that I'm happy to open up just in another tab and use. But I figure that for 39 bucks a year, this is a pretty solid plugin. But I'm just, it's, a, it's an odd one, I think, for WordPress, well, for Automatic to have acquired this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 first of all, just really like this plugin. I've, mm. I want to say I like it. I just like the idea of it. I've never used it. Um, but the 
seeing um, end user clients struggling with social sharing on regular, you know, regular basis on websites and trying to sort of get them to understand, you know, oh, uh, there's the feature image, it'll fall back to that. And if you don't have that, you can, you know, customize what image you upload in there. And whenever I, you know, as soon as this plugin came out, I, I kind of recalled all of those conversations with clients and then sort of felt, wow, you know, we're in the, we're in the, 2020s now and such a restriction on what you can do on such a super important marketing aspect to visualizing your sort of snippet of your web page when you're sharing it on any of these different social platforms um and yeah it came out i think as 39 dollars per site per year which is totally a, a totally affordable price for anyone who's got any kind of marketing goal but i have the feeling i don't have any numbers on this but i just have the feeling that that sort of plugin is the kind of plugin that would sort of get lost and you know and just wouldn't be making the sales that it probably deserved what it did so i'm kind of you know on on that basis and that assumption i'm really happy that um it's been acquired and in a in a place where it's going to get some serious use out of it you know, the, the cynical part of me is like, oh, I see, it's going to be in Jetpack. But but quite honestly, uh, if Jetpack is going to bring a feature like that to all its premium uh, customers, it's a, it's, a, it's a real win for WordPress. I don't know if Squarespace and Wix has that kind of thing. I yeah, doubt. I don't actually. I'm not sure. I don't think they do. I, I just... I've I just, I just don't think. I think uh, we'd have sort of seen some really good sort of Twitter and Facebook shares from websites if they did, because people would be using that. I, I assume it's going to go into WordPress.com as well, because that just completely makes sense. Uh, if they bought it for Jetpack, to not put that kind of feature in WordPress.com would would be a real fail. So, congratulations to Jetpack. Congratulations to Daniel. And um, and the uh, you know millions of users will be using this at some point in the near future, um, mm -hmm. even if I'm a little bit cynical about you know Jetpack in general. But Jetpack just got a whole lot better. Apparently, they were introduced. Automatic and uh, Daniel Post were introduced. The creator of the plugin. Apparently, they were introduced by Chris Coyer, which is a name that uh, every oh, time I hear the word wow. Chris Coyer, I'm like, I must go and read that right away. I really yeah. like Chris Coyer's stuff. He's just amazing. He, yeah. Yeah, Chris Coyer is one of those people that I wish I was him. <laughs> hmm. he's, he's really, and can I just, I'll just say, he's like super generous. He was guest number six on my podcast before I had any audience or anything. I was just like, hey, Chris, um, do you want to like come on my show and talk about how you built CodePen? And he's like, yeah. Sure. Wow. Nice. Yeah super nice yeah. <laughs> like, i couldn't believe it uh so really generous dude with his time super cool um yeah. but uh i i mean i i think that this is uh, jetpack you know like paul was saying uh jetpack has a lot of baggage and i think there are maybe too many features in jetpack but jetpack's social sharing tools are very good yes uh, the, the buttons uh, the the ability to publicize, I think, are some of the the tightest features of Jetpack, and uh, this is going to fit in really well, I think. Um, so I'm I'm excited, right? Because I you know I, I can hear a lot of naysayers saying I can just do this in Canva, and I'm like I I could just do it in mm -hmm. Canva too, but I'm not going to. Exactly. And like, the things that I make People in Canva are like yeah. kind of crap, right? Like uh, so, mm -hmm. if it's something, and I'm like, oh man, I need a share image. Right now, I go to unsplash which is i think a, a bad word in the wordpress space now i think um oh well, why was that there is a reason for why it is but i've forgotten why I, it is. yeah i think uh i think it had something to do with like their their oh, policy, licensing their licensing licensing yeah. yeah yeah um and you know and when wordpress gets that integration that was announced a little while ago i'll happily use that but Right now, like I, I have to, I go out to Unsplash, I find an image, and I just upload. I don't even add the text or anything like that because. Okay. Um, but having a tool like this is going to save me a ton of time. I think. Yeah, especially if it did things like automatically overlay the post title and maybe right. I don't know some of your the first twenty let words of your yeah. excerpt or something. Yeah. Have you have you guys ever used stencil? Yeah. No. Stencil. You recommended stencils. it to me in our early parts of our friendship. In fact. What's that? Uh, you you recommend it to me recommended to me in the early days of our friendship oh and you're still using it 
Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it is it, good. It's yeah. an online tool. You, it's at getstencil dot something. I imagine it's dot com. I can't remember. Yeah, and they've got a really com. neat, really neat WordPress plugin, which in the media library it just adds another tab. So you know, you've got media and you've got the upload tab. They add another one which is stencil. So you create inside their UI. I'm guessing it's an iframe or something. You create your featured image inside the UI, and then you just click export to WordPress and it just chucks it in the media library. It doesn't bring in the the feature, uh, sorry, the um, the post title or anything like that, which I'm guessing this will do, but it, it, it's right there inside of WordPress. And if you've got um, the appropriate li license, I think you can install this in client sites as well. I'm not 100%. You can, you can, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, it, it, it's been like that for a couple of years yep. and, uh, and this plugin sort of mimics the kind of thing that this does but without needing the third party SaaS tool as well so and yeah that is a super even just the things like simple cropping and you know just uh, changing the lighting a little bit on a photo or make giving it that kind of Instagram filter look that's what that kind of plugin does I wonder if this um if this one does that I wonder I assume it probably does you know the ability to sort of Add yeah, it looks like simple Instagrammy sort of filters onto the. Photo. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Just from the logos that we got, sorry, the, yeah. the little thumbnails we've got here, it looks like you can fiddle with fonts, opacity, yeah. dragging images. Looks like you can add your logo. Just adding the logo is kind of nice if you don't have to do yeah. that, and that's all automatic. That's kind of fun. Um, anyway, nice and a, and a curious. I mean, yeah, I mean the last thing, last thing I'd say really is uh, you know when it comes to Jetpack, you know we're we're all kind of like the. The snobby nerds when it comes to WordPress, you know, we, we care about the what's going on in the pit lane and everything. And that's why we kind of, you know, complain about Jetpack because they put ads in the naughty places and stuff like that. And um, but as an end user, like Joe said, some of the tools that are in there, if you don't care about a bit of bloat and stuff like that, because you're just not aware that that's even a bad thing, then yeah. it's, <laughs> it's only going to get better, I think. Can, can I just talk about how confused... I'm looking at Jetpack's pricing page right now, and it's mm. very confusing. Mm -hmm. Let me put it up. Let's go on. We're mm -hmm. going to get into this. What's the... Well, I can never remember the URL. Let's just yeah, Google, I'll, uh, just Google Jetpack. It, yeah, it's there at jetpack.com. I'll drop okay. it in the private chat here. But got it. I got it. I was, it's on I the screen. Like, oh. I'm like, how much could it cost? And then if you go to pricing... Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. you're going to see localized pricing. That's cool. But yeah, pounds. Okay, and I bet so you like, it's the same in pounds as it is in dollars, which always annoys us over on this side of the pond. You know, mm -hmm. what's what's interesting is it is not. It's Ooh. 99 bucks a month for the complete. Uh, so it looks like I wonder what they're using for that, because I want to. Yeah. But that yeah. feels like about the market rate. Actually, that feels like the dollar to the pound translation. Ninety nine right. to seventy seven here. Is that what yeah. you mean? Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But very often we will see products where. And, and right. if you go to the um, if you go to the pricing and you put a VPN on and it comes out in dollars, it's the exact yeah. same number, and it's like just that's like, a rip off. With they're just so swapping the yeah, yeah. the currency symbol. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So thirty eight pounds and twenty five pence for the complete nine pounds fifty five for the daily and right. four pounds for the backup. It's like unclear a little. So like backup security. And then it's complete both backup and security, but then it says you also get the CRM and marketing. It is difficult. And tools. Yeah. Like, and then if you scroll down, there's more pricing tables. Oh. But the, 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 top, the top one, the complete one, doesn't seem like fantastic value compared to. And the that's exactly one. what I was like 99 bucks a month for what? What am I getting? They're saying, you know, the CRM's included in there, but that. But the CRM later on, like you said, is free. Like markdown is free. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, strange, if I isn't add it? up all of mm. this, does it add up to seventy-seven bucks a month or that'd be six fifty? Uh, I'm not going to do that. But no, it doesn't. All no. of this stuff down here is cheaper. Cheaper. Yeah. 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 Okay. This right, is. I'm going I'm to write a letter. I'm going to get this figured out. I'm yeah. Really We're, you know, this is. I hear a lot of times that WordPress has a pricing problem. And uh, here is that, right? I don't really know what I'm getting. And then if I you am... scroll up to the very top, it should say something like 40% off. But you got it, yeah. 40% yeah, 14-day money-back guarantee, though. And and they should put a big badge here. Same price to U.S. citizens as it is to people in Europe. Yeah. 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 
they should do that. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I'm going to delve yeah. deeper into that. This is a, this is just something I've never bothered with. When I joined WordPress, every like there were real knives out about Jetpack um, at the time when I joined, and it, and it would just appear that all the people that I was meeting with and taking advice from were just like, just don't. So I never did. Yeah, I have no axe to grind, but I just never have gone there. So yeah, I I would just rather use like one-off plugins for yep. the things. Now, if you look at the comparison table the value is clearer yeah um it's the real time aspect on the top one that's the yeah. main difference so yeah, yeah. yeah this scan in real time and so on right. yeah the real time yeah back- real time backup the, so if you got a archives site. for activity log yeah the search yeah it's it's a yeah the, the value is a lot clearer if you look at the comparison page but yeah like the compare all bundles there but but it, you're right, though. As far as I can see, that does not add up to twenty. No, so what's that? Forty-seven dollars, fifty-one dollars, fifty-five dollars, fifty-seven fifty a month yeah. for the for yeah, if you yeah. just get them all separately. Oh, yeah. is it priced on this though? Say fifty oh. percent off for the first oh, year. Maybe, maybe this. Yeah. No, no, because it says I don't know. None of it it's makes confusing. sense. None of it. Great makes audio sense. content that though. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. Know. Let's look at a pricing table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The the, the TLD. If you want to edit all that out, the TLDR is there's like seven different price boxes on the Jetpack pricing page. Mm. Yes, and it's yes. very. And the three unfair. of us can't figure out yeah. what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, I would really just say like get Jetpack Pro, big, get Jetpack Pro. Uh, I guess I'm rebranding Jetpack for them. Uh, get Jetpack Pro for. 40 bucks a month or whatever it is, uh, you get all of these things or a la carte get these things, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So present the one you want them to get or then give them the options below. Mm-hmm. But what do I know? Well, a fair amount, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. it's a complete change of direction. This is, this is introduced to me this week by um, the guy who I did a podcast recording with. I recorded a podcast which... Did it come out? Let me just have a quick look on my homepage. I think I put it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, Alex Kirk from the Friends plugin. By the way, if you haven't come across the Friends plugin and you're interested in like the possibilities of doing social networking inside a WordPress, where you can connect, you can basically c- create a federated WordPress in- uh, interconnected exchange. Go and check that plugin out. It's really cool. And I noticed on his pricing table, and I was—I just said to him, "Where's what's this all about?" On his pricing table, it told you that if you bought his product, he would plant some trees. And I was like, "What's that about?" And he said, "Well, I've just hooked into this API. I've—I've I've written a plugin so that if you've got an EDD product, it, you can show on the checkout page how many trees you're going to plant." And I just thought. Oh, that's so cool. I mean, this stuff's right up my street. I don't do anywhere near enough. You know, I'm, I'm a typical person. I'm sure many of us could be guilty of the same thing. I talk the talk, but don't necessarily do the right thing. And um, I just thought this was a really, really nice way of offsetting some of that. So if you buy his product, you can link it into EDD. And every time you get a sale, a proportion of that sale will be sucked out and given to what is the organization called? Ecology, E C O L O G I, Ecology partners globally with local projects that are implementing the best climate crisis solutions for offsetting COT. So basically, they'll go plant trees if you give them a little amount of money. And obviously, if you're selling a boatload of stuff through EDD, all of that will be added up. It's kind of one of those win wins. You get to feel good, but you don't actually have to go out and plant the tree yourself. You actually, somebody else goes and does that. So I just thought that was just such a nice little initiative. And it's at responsiblewp.com. Go check it out. What do you reckon, guys? You like that? The, yeah. so this looks super cool. So this is a this is a separate service yep. that connects EDD with the ecology, right? This is not like right. an EDD. It's like an EDD add-on. Okay. Um, I and go on. Oh no, go ahead. Well, I was just going to uh, say we didn't talk about this on the podcast I recorded. I just said, "Why have you got the number of trees you're going to plant on your checkout for the Friends plugin?" And he said, "Oh, it's this thing that I've built, and it bolts onto EDD, 
And I just thought that's fascinating. And I said, I'll share that because I like it. So here I am sharing it. So I think that's how it works. Um, it says, the current version of Responsible WP does require some coding skills. By way of a standard WordPress filter, you will define the number of trees and amount of CO2 to be offset per purchase or renewal. These amounts can be customized according to the purchase and renewal amounts. Responsible WP hooks into all the new purchases and all new existing subscriptions and renewals. When any purchase renewal is processed on your site, Responsible WP sends an API request to Ecology Impact API in order to plant any number of requested trees and or offset any amount of CO2. How cool is that? <laughs> That's really cool. If, Isn't it? if this existed for WooCommerce, I would I would install it. My brother, yep. uh, my brother Phil is more conscious about this than I am, right? I'm kind of like, ah, the economy will catch up to it sort of thing. Um, but he uh, he's been really pushing me to to do the right thing. So, you know, we stopped buying like plastic water bottles and I have the a reusable one and a reusable filter. For Christmas one year, he got me reusable shopping bags uh, <laughs> as like a as like a gag gift. But now we try to use them. And um, but this this is a cool. I mean, it's it's no effort for site owners, right? If you're selling stuff right. on your site and you're using EDD, and may, uh, maybe I'll put in a request for WooCommerce. Um, it's no skin off your back. You get to right. uh, you get to say you're doing a good thing, and yeah. And the so environment has helped. On the bottom of their site, this little plugin, which I don't believe he's done any marketing on um, and what have you, they've the, the impact of the responsible WP.com licenses is 225 trees. And if you actually think about that, that's like a football field's worth of trees. Yeah. And and mm. and the the message right at the top of the website is pretty much the best. And I don't know the science of this, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm just I'm just reading what it says. It says the the trees on our pla on planet Earth are one of the best ways to clean our air. I'm sure that's true. And and if he's managed to put 225 up off this little plugin, you imagine what the likes of some of the big guys. And you don't have to do like it's not like you have to do 10 percent of your profit. It could be you know if I sell 100 licenses, we'll do five trees. Yeah. Um, I I think Stripe is, you know what? I think Stripe is offering the same sort of thing where you can choose to donate 1% of revenue to climate change. Hmm. Um, we, um, both Paul and I listened to a podcast by a guy called Sam Harris. And this guy, Sam Harris, can you remember the name of the thing that he, he sort of, he, he tithes, if you like, so if he, every time he earns a thousand dollars, he gives a proportion of it to this organization, and it's basically this one hit for everything that he wants to donate to. And he just says, "I'll give you the money because I trust that you're going to do the best possible thing with it in terms of climate change, um, you know, tackling infectious diseases and all this kind of stuff." And I can't remember what the organization is, but he had a guy on the podcast, and he was basically saying. You know, there are people who know what needs to be done better than you do. So, mm -hmm. you know, sure, you've got your local charities, but on a global level, there's there's better ways of, of spending your money than, than, um, than you know, necessarily going out and finding one charity at a time. Right. You remember right. what that was, Paul? I don't. I no. don't. But, um, yeah, thanks for that link, Joe. He's just put in the uh, private uh, chat the link to the Stripe thing that they're doing. I Hopefully Stripe does the same as what this plugin allows, isn't it? When you are you do have a user on the checkout that they can actually see what um what what's going on there. And obviously you could put a uh what do you call it, a cart abandonment message in to make them feel really guilty. Yeah. <laughs> if, they, if they didn't go through with That's it. Right. Hey, you, yeah. you just killed twenty five trees. Yeah. Uh, any any Unless refunds. You come back and buy my my plugin. <laughs> Yeah, and then 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 you'll be all right again. But it's lovely that you you can sort of show them. And I think I said this the other day actually, and I don't even know if Elon Musk really did say this, but I heard that Elon Musk did a talk recently, and was saying that uh, the way that um, to get the mainstream to start understanding and tackling climate yeah. change yeah. when it's such a slow moving, a slow burning sort of problem that we don't suddenly panic about on a day to day basis is to stop trying to persuade people to get scared about it and and start making it 
cool and fun to save the environment. So for example, you take the Tesla. So one minute everyone's buying eight liter V8, V12 cars, who's got the money for that. The next minute, the same people are like, I don't want that anymore. I want a Tesla. And, you know, if the, the in the future somehow the products that you buy can can help that or the, and you feel proud about that and there's a kind of badge and on, of honest situation, especially with things like social media, everyone wants to kind of virtual signal, signal, signal these days. And it's this super easy one that every time you buy a product from anywhere, you can just share what that did or that, you know, something on your phone. It's just, it seems to be that it's a, it's a good answer to getting people excited because Nathan you were visibly excited about this just then when you were talking about it because it was like this is a cool idea I want to buy something that saves trees and I'll be proud about it and I'll tell all my friends about it sort of thing so yeah honestly if there was if there was two things that were that had feature parity and were basically the same price I would 100 times out of 100 buy the one with the the credentials of planting trees or something equal. Um, the, and, and the so younger generations it, look, look, care about this more than, more than, you know, us old farts as well, because, <laughs> you know, we're, we're sort of, um, we haven't got to, we, we haven't got to grow up for as many years with this, you know, we're older now and it's, and, you know, and, and, and the science was a bit, m- not mixed, but the yeah. messaging certainly was, right? It was like global warming, global cooling, global warming, mm. climate change. And so there was... Everyone a, wants to be cool and everyone wants to be nice problem. and warm. That's, you know, it's not exactly yeah. a scary, scary language, right. is it, really? Yeah. Or, or you know what, what most people would say on like, a, if it snowed a lot here, you know, I, I would know people who'd be like, oh, so much for global warming, right? It's right. Snowing, well, like, yeah, that I seem to be the hearing the phrase yeah. "global heating" more now. In the mm. in our news, everybody seems to, like on the BBC and oh, what have you. They yeah. seem to have dropped global warming, and they're talking about global heating. Yep. Mm. Um, I don't know why that is, but yeah, it's just such a great initiative. Alex yeah. Kirk, if you want to get in touch with him, um, Joe and have him on a podcast he's a really yeah really yeah for cool, sure really cool guy um and it looks i'll just highlight uh in the chat over here um marcus burnett said that it looks like ecology has a zapier integration okay um, very so, cool uh, yeah yeah so okay so you could do that with WooCommerce. yeah so now i guess i have to walk the walk right uh i'll have to set up that zapier mm. integration today yeah mm-hmm. um what else have we got here da, da, da. Uh, Joe van der Kaart, which who recorded last week as well. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joshua. Sorry, I don't know why I just called you Joe. Uh, I have in mind to build something out for WooCommerce or something to more generally hook into any WP action. I don't use WooCommerce myself at the moment, though. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Josh. It looks like Zapier might be taking the heavy lifting. And Chris, oh, sorry, Chris, your comment came and then went again. Uh, Chris Hughes, nice to have you back, Chris. Climate. Uh, Stripe climate is great. Gives I give one percent automatically from all my sales across my brands. That's great. Okay, yeah. I yeah. I just added I just as we were talking added that to my account. So nice. Yeah, who, who can complain? Um, yeah, right. I mean, yeah, yeah. This is great. Okay, so that's responsible. Actually, is it me or does that logo just ever so slightly with the tree there? Does it look a little bit like irresponsible WP? The way <laughs> the way that looks a bit like an R. Um, it's responsiblewp.com. and there you go. I was expecting that to be like a thirty second piece, but it turned into ten minutes. Uh, one more thing, Nathan. Yeah, go. I don't know if I missed it when I was reading through the Stripe website just then, but Joshua Vander Vandercar is the creator of this. So the comment, Do you know, have I got Alec, Joshua, if it's you, I am so it is, I've sorry. Just check just yeah. the website. Hello, Joshua. Yeah. Well done. Good job here. Do you know, that was amazing. Joshua, ah. I, I don't I'm know gonna Joshua, say this. But, um, I'm going to say this in my yeah. defense, Joshua. Firstly, I apologize. Secondly, I am feeling remarkably unwell at the moment. Yeah. And, um, and I apologize for messing your name up with somebody else. I interviewed two people last week and I've utterly drop the ball on that i can only apologize if i was you joshua i would be furious at me for making mm. such an error but i hope you forgive me um i didn't mean to do that Ooh, joshua you messed up our fish and chip on the weekend so you know it's just it's becoming a thing now no but don't don't oh <laughs> right paul will you carry on for a minute i'm gonna i'm gonna go and like beat myself up in another room <laughs> for a few don't minutes silly, man. joshua sorry 
God, what, an, what, what a donkey, for want of a better word, I am. Let's move on before I put any more f- feet in my mouth. Um, there's a couple of pieces this week on page builders that I sort of thought were quite interesting. Both, I'm not going to go into the detail on both of them, but I just thought this was quite curious. Yeah. The Bricks page builder re- had a new release this week, 1.3.4, in which they um, went into great detail about how they had made their their page builder quicker, faster, um, and stripped out a load of the assets that they were loading and the way that they were loading them. This is a YouTube video. I confess I probably watched about eight of the 16 minutes. I watched a bit about all of the speed optimization stuff. And then when it got to the features, because I don't use it, I I stopped watching at that point. And then David Wormsley put me um, onto Divi, who again, I'm not a user of, but I actually watched their video. Same sort of thing. They've gone absolutely to town, it would appear, almost like a bit of a rewrite, um, meaning that they've dropped their, their the amount of um, assets that they're loading. I think in one case, they've got the CSS from like 800 kilobytes down to something like 56, if memory mm-hmm. served. I don't wow. know if that means it was incredibly badly performant prior to that, um, but apparently now it really does depend on what's on the page. If it ain't on the page, it's not loading anything to do with it, whereas it, in the past I think it loaded an awful lot. So that that's my bit about those two bits about page builders speeding things up, and I'm sure that the uh, the other guys will be doing exactly the same thing. But did you mm. did either of you see any of that? Curious about any of this? Uh, the bricks one I I didn't really um take too much interest in because I don't really use bricks and I uh, don't know if you plan any plans to. I think it's already quite performant, but um, you can see that. Most of the major page builders are making this kind of move at the moment, as well as other moves that they're probably making in the background in an answer to knowing that, you know, Automatic are um, pushing a, a, a use, use our thing rather than um, than the page builders because, you know, they put out a video kind of poo-pooing the, uh, the page builders um, as such. It definitely had that feel to it. But I think the... It's like I said about earlier about, you know, the Gutenberg project needs to push out this um, full site editing thing so they can get past that milestone. And then at least some of their team can probably turn towards the performance things. Now, Gutenberg already does amazing performance anyway right now, but it with each release, it does become more bloated. And you can see on the Dopey Tavern, some people often you know, bring up a comment about, you know, is someone going to sort of focus on performance? And right now they get away with it because it's already fast. But as it as it grows, it, you know, it'll, it'll slow down a bit. But um, I think Divi has done some really cool stuff here. And I just like, you know, the, the fact is, is that some of us kind of more nerdy people would um, get get wound up by too many divs in page builders and stuff like that i think uh the guy lewis from oxygen the creative oxygen um even created a, a phrase called divception that he, right. that he kind of was infamous for um on some of his infamous youtube videos which were hilarious yeah they were uh, where quite he funny. ripped to pieces all the other page builders and compared to oxygen um, did you actually but, see the video where he, ref- he got about halfway through and then he just said, I'm, I'm just not even going to use Divi in the rest of this video. And he just stopped. Yeah, he just, he just, swore, an angry he just swore and said, I'm not going there. And so, and, um, but um, the, the thing is, is that the, the page builders are aware that, you know, core vitals is now this, this big thing um, that people are interested in how important it is. In, in how people are interpreting what it is, is is totally up for debate. But in terms of people being able to take one tool and then compare it to another, ignore the feature, par- uh, the Paratine features, and then say this product is better than that one because it scores better on the, um, on the Google scores is a kind of ridiculous um, scenario. So I think what these page builder tools are doing is that they're saying, okay, let's just, let's just get rid of this being a, a comparative problem let's get it to the point where someone can say gutenberg is better for these people for this reason and this reason has no hype around it it's just it's a better tool for those people whereas divi is a better tool for those people without seeing a bunch of youtube videos promoting a particular product that then just have a bunch of performance scores and use that as a basis to make a purchasing decision for an end user who really should be focusing on the features 
and the other benefits that they get out of it. So I think Divi have just done a, a sterling job because people used to say about Divi, they're too old, uh, as in, you know, they've been around for too long. They've got too much legacy code in there. How are they? How could they ever solve this problem? You know, they never will be able to. And they've just just turned up, rocked up, and proved everybody wrong. And if these are the if these are the metrics that Google say are important on their test, and Divi has answered those without giving a, a substandard user experience for the end user, then they've ticked all the boxes, and you can only just congratulate them for that. And uh, I think all the Divi users will be super happy about yeah, this. Yeah, that's the point, right? Yeah, it's just free free betterness. Yep, free betterness. I like yeah. that. Um, right. So, in a, in an attempt to to not feel quite as bad as this podcast goes on. I'm just going to say a few things. Firstly, Joshua, he says, all love from mine. Thank you so much. I beg your forgiveness. Secondly, Joshua is, I mentioned about the Friends plugin. I feel at this point I'm going to just mention what Joshua was on the podcast talking about. He's from Rocket Genius, so he works with the team over at um, Gravity Forms. And the podcast that I was recording with him was all about his Gravity Hopper plugin so that'll be coming out next so hopefully i've rewound many of my mistakes i'm just going to keep them all in i'm not going to edit them out because <laughs> not i'll have to edit out about half of this but anyway there we go so sorry joshua <clears throat> right okay moving on um i'm gonna miss out the the one from wp builds because i think we mentioned their the friends plugin that we yeah just you just did out. it anyway you just yeah exactly it just exactly right. so we'll go go to this one this is i don't know what this what everybody thinks about this this is on the bbc website we very rarely mention the bbc website but it, it's mm. not specifically wordpress but here we are um increasingly it feels to me like the whole cookie um, saga is just getting worse and worse and more dramatic. I'm now at the point where I go to websites and I basically just agree to everything because I can't be bothered to not agree to things or go and check out what it is that I'm supposed to agree. In many cases, the website won't let me use any of the website until I've agreed to something or other. Usually it's kind of like two options. You can manage cookies and only choose essential ones and switch all the other ones off. But that's like a 25 second process. So it's just quicker for me to get to the content by clicking yes. I, I kind of feel that the EU in particular, was a part of this. the reason this all happened. I don't know if this was a thing coming out of North America or if it, or if it was coming out of the EU, but it felt like it was an EU uh, big push. It would appear that uh, the, the UK in particular um, is going to be trying to sort of rewind a lot of history and get to the point where we can reconsider the, the, the dire situation that we're in with cookies. And I just thought it was interesting. Uh, one of the representatives from the UK this week is going to try and urge the world, the G, well, via the G7, and then presumably push it out across the rest of the world, to just take this into hand and say, actually, has this all gone too far? Who, who, who didn't see this coming? Who works mm. in tech? This at the time, I remember everybody who was who was on our side of the fence was saying, "This is stupid. This should never be. A, this is exactly what's going to happen. We'll get these great big banners. It'll get in the way." Uh, but the politicians drove it through, and now we've got this. So hopefully, we'll get to the point where I don't know. Maybe this is the maybe this is the terrain of the browsers or something where you could have a a feature built into the browser where. Prior to going to any website, when you first log into your brand new, fresh install of Chrome or whatever it might be, you can say, actually, these, this type of thing I'm happy with, this type of thing I'm happy with, but not this, 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 and this. And then somehow that gets passed through from the browser to the website when you, when you go there. But n n I think it's fair to say that nobody wants to be tracked. Probably that's a good default. But I, anyway, mm. so here we are. The ICO are um, are having to deal with all of this in the UK. I can't see uh, it happening, hoping... actually. I don't, unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, I mean, I'm, go on, Joe. I mean, we're we're seeing that with uh, with Safari. I think part of so yeah. part of this, right, is yep. Says here. I mean, politicians <laughs> are making law based on nothing they know about, right? Mm. Like they don't consider like this the one. implications yeah. and how this is going to be implemented. Uh, but also, um, you know, Apple 
started with privacy mode in some, I think it was iOS 14 um, with Safari. Now it's coming out across all of iOS, right? Where you can ask um, apps, or maybe this is all iOS 14. You can ask apps not to track you. Um, I think it's, and, I think it's don't track by default, isn't it now? Yes. In iOS. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. And then on Apple TV, it's not by default uh, because mm. I've had to answer that question multiple times recently. Um, but uh yeah, so I think that we're seeing uh we're seeing one company who's not making money off of other people's data, more or less, Apple pushing this privacy stuff. Uh Google is maybe reacting a little bit, right? Cuz they were going to fold that what was that called? I think we talked about it last oh, week. Oh, Flock. Show. Yeah, right? Mm. They were pushing it Federated like, learning of cohorts, which yeah, is dead. Yes, right, exactly. So, um you know, I think that the tech companies, or at least certain software, is reacting to an increasing realization that consumers understand, right, that they want to stay private. Um, and this, uh, the GDPR stuff, which is probably what kicked a whole lot of this off, but California is getting similar. Um, California is getting similar laws. I'm, I'm sure the United States is. If there's one thing Republicans and Democrats agree on, it's that big tech is is the bad guy. Um, hmm. So I'm I'm sure that you know laws are coming um, at a federal level here, and so I mean someone needs to think about it. I, I I have a hard time thinking that Google will do anything too detrimental to their main revenue model, which is ads, and so they need to track people, but. Um, I don't know. Well, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to to pass this problem off to like the biggest government in the world because I don't think that they'll effectively solve this problem in any short amount of time. But I don't know really who else would would handle it in a in a more objective way, maybe. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? You were saying, Paul, that you just don't think it's going to happen. You just mean <laughs> the the cat's out of the bag. It's too late. Uh, well, I think yeah. Actually, not the Joe, cookies thing. Joe's, you know, sort of opened my mind a little bit on how I was thinking about that because at this point, you know, the obvious solution is it goes inside the browser or the device. So Apple are already on board with that anyway. They want to do that, and then. Google are kind of probably not up, not up for it because they have a major browser and their whole business model is sort of affected. Yet, if it was done via law and it had to be put in, you know, into browsers, they would probably find a way to make the UX slightly um, in favor of uh, not blocking all the Google-based stuff. And at this point, Facebook is like, why don't we have devices and web browser? <laughs> and they're like, Facebook is, you know, screwed again sort of thing. But um, yeah, I mean, the other, the other, so I just, I just don't think that, you know, Google Chrome will be, you know, the people who run Chrome will be like, yeah, that's a brilliant idea. Let's put that in our yeah. browser. Whereas you see this sort of feature in, you just switched Nathan to Firefox, didn't you? Just uh, last week, yep. last yep. week because of a privacy setting that they had done where, can you explain it where they 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 box right. off per site yeah. privacy? So is that right? I'm not actually everything that you're looking at on the screen now is in yeah. Brave with their Shields up enabled. I think it's called Shields up. You know the little lion logo at the end of the um, yeah. Omni Bar or whatever it's called these days. So I have that. But I went to um, I went to Firefox because there's an extension that you can get an add on. I think it's called on the Firefox side, and it containerizes your tabs. So basically you say, okay, if I ever open Facebook, open it in this tab and all the cookies sit in that tab and they can't get out. Mm. Um, so if I accidentally type in Facebook or I click on a link which takes me to Facebook, it opens it in the same container so the cookies can't escape. And I, for me, that's great because I really want that to be the case, but I don't suppose most people are going to go out and find that. Firefox mm. extension. And of course you could do the same mm. for any website. It could be Google or what have you, but it's just, uh, yeah. you know, because I'm curious about that. I've done it. I've changed my mind. I think it will happen actually now come to think about it after a little discussion. But, um, I think, uh, you know, the, 
use end users are becoming more mindful they will make consumer choices you can see that you know one minute a particular web browser is the king and then the next minute it's not very very quickly so things change really really quick and if users may if users start making the decisions that force other browsers to you know so for instance you might use chrome and then you get pop-ups all the time but if you use firefox you don't get pop-ups because um the pop all the producers of the pop-up plugins just do a quick check we don't need to do it. Decisions already made. Whereas Chrome might prefer people to, you know, check off cookies settings on a particular website. But as it happens, that ignores anything. It might that you know that gives them a better chance of not getting blocked themselves. And I think um, it's the UK. You know, one of the UK representatives that suggested this to the EU. It would have probably been better if you know they'd had a little whisper to one of our European friends and said, "Will you suggest this? Because if I say it, no one's going to listen." Because <laughs> the, the the European politicians don't like the UK ones these days. I think um, post Brexit. This is. I'll just quickly put it on the screen. This is the add-on that I was talking about. It's uh, it's called Multi Account Containers by by Mozilla, uh, and cool. you Very cool. Very you cool. get a lovely little confirmation in at the end of the URL bar. You you color code what you want that container to be, and you call it something. So in my case, I've I've made it Facebook Blue. And I've made it sort of Google Red, so if I'm in it, I can just see directly that um, that I'm in that tab. I don't, I'm guessing this isn't new because it's got a bunch of reviews, nearly six thousand reviews, most of them by the looks of it five star. And the only thing I haven't worked out so far, but the promise was that it would, if I strayed into Facebook, that it would load in that container, and I haven't yet figured out how to enable that. I'm I'm having to manually open Facebook inside of that container, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's mm-hmm. worth checking out. Uh, it's mm-hmm. at addons.mozilla.org. It's a great so. shout. There's some really nice little add-on things like this climate change helper and this privacy helper and stuff. Mm, this week. Yeah, really nice yeah. little things. Yeah. Uh, so that's what it's called. Um, right. Okay. Shall we move on? I'm conscious I don't see all the browsers. Where are we? Back to this. Okay. Let's move back. <laughs> so, <laughs> did any? Did you guys get a chance to play this? This is hysterical. This has got nothing to do with WordPress. Apparently, you know, like a parrot, if you say something often enough, a parrot can mimic it. Apparently, docs can. And this doc, as a, a, a recording has been rediscovered after many years of a doc saying, okay, bear in mind, this doc came from Australia. Mm-hmm. It says, you bloody fool. You bloody fool. <laughs> You bloody fool. And uh, go and listen to it. It's over at BB. So just just Google audio of Ripper, the talking Australian doc rediscovered. You tell me, is that doc saying you bloody fool or not? I think it is. And I just thought that was such a weird, a weird story that I thought I'd surface it. So there you go. Go and check that just, out. Uh, did any of you ever see the, uh, I think it was a BBC David Attenborough uh, thing with this particular bird that can was literally like a dictaphone it could record any noise at all like a car going past or something like that so it was in like the middle of like this rainforest or something like that and it if there was a monkey making a noise it would make a noise like a monkey immediately and it was absolutely amazing it was all part of the mating rituals and the sort of those sort of things but then and so everyone's watching the tv show just like that is so cool and then they sort of cut to it making chainsaw noises. So basically this 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 bird oh. is starting to basically mimic the noises of its own environment getting destroyed. It was absolutely, it was heartbreaking. It was just terrible. You know, My just friend the, had three parrots. She had a parrot room mm. and you had to walk through the parrot room. If you wanted to go from the front door to her kitchen, you had to walk through the parrot room. And it they, they live a long time, parrots, you know, You've got them for like 80. They live the length of a human life. They don't get to 70, 80 years old. So if you're into parrots, you are basically committing yourself to having this pet for the rest of your life. And uh, it mimicked perfectly the telephone. And so you could never, ever know that the telephone, because the the telephone was at the back of the house. They only had one. So you had to walk through, and it was only at the point where you got into the parrot room that you were like, it's not the phone, it's the parrot again <laughs> <laughs> i think you might be muted joe 
or I oh i just i i mouthed wow very quiet (laughs) yeah Yeah, it's kind of weird uh what do you reckon matt says he just listened to it i mean yeah it could be that i i think it's saying it but it's a duck it's not a parrot i didn't expect a duck to be able to Mm. even to like vaguely get closer anyway that was my if it looks like a duck and sounds like a duck it could be saying you bloody fool Mm -hmm. i like it why didn't i think of that god I mean, Don- ducks have always been able to almost talk. You know, Donald Duck, he's, he can't talk that well, but he's, That's he's quite good at it, isn't he? <laughs> uh, Matt saying he really likes the story a few months ago with a guy who had a parrot out, out in his cage in his backyard and it was screaming and shouting, let me out. His neighbors <laughs> called the police and he had an awkward conversation, <laughs> awkward conversation with them. They laughed and left. Um, I'm not going to go into a dark place how that story could have ended. I'm just going to say as well, Matt is back with his long comments that are covering up my face. Oh, yeah. It's been months (laughs) since we've had a comment. Always Matt. It's always Matt Davis doing that. Yeah, that's it. Come on, Matt. Give us another huge comment and uh, cover up his face. This came from Joe. We asked people to put in their picks of the week, and Joe's put in this one. This, Joe, is sublimely cool. I have no idea why this didn't exist. Like, why didn't somebody invent this? It's called Zip Message. Tell us what it does. Yeah, so Zip Message, uh, created by the venerable Brian Castle, um, is a way to do asynchronous video conversations. So imagine uh, you're doing, let's say, a coaching call, right? And instead of picking a time between you and your coaching client um, or your or your web design client, right? Uh, you can leave a message, send them this link, and then they can respond in kind. And so, I have been I've been beta test. I almost wore the T-shirt today, but I didn't want to like recommend and also wear the T-shirt that mm. felt like a very like uh, wearing the the T-shirt of the concert you're going to see. Yeah. Right? Which, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, uh, but I've been using it for all sorts of stuff. I've been using it for coaching calls. I've been using it to get testimonials from students. Paul, I think you used this, yep. right? To, we, to submit your testimonial. Probably, yeah, you instigated the conversation on Zip Message, and it was yeah. great. It was great. Uh, I've been using it to get like listener feedback. So there's, I have, you can create different mailboxes. So I have a separate mailbox for. Um, people who want to submit questions to how I built it. And then I have a support mailbox. So if you go to, um, if you want to see it in action, you can go to podcastliftoff.com. Uh, okay, let's and, try that. Yeah. Podcast, is that all right? Do you mind me putting that on the screen? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Podcast lift. Off. Joe, can I ask you a question about yeah. the, how the pricing sort of works? Like, not exactly how much it costs, but um, let's say uh, you have an account that you pay for. Uh, what is there a, is there an end point where the person that you've reached out to for zip messaging can no longer send you any messages back unless they get a premium account or no so if you initiate the message on your account anybody so you can do it so that like only a specific person can respond or you yep. can make it so that anybody can respond even anonymous people so okay that's really cool all of sure the limitations yeah. quote unquote are, they're all feature limitations first of yeah. all so it's like the 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 basic account versus the premium account limits yeah. let's say the number of mailboxes you can have to to one right. versus unlimited um or like i think zapier integration and certain teams things are only for the premium account but um yeah, so there's there's no it's not like um like Zencaster or or Restream or what or not Restream um Streamyard or whatever uh where like you can only record X amount of hours per month or something like that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, that's really maybe nice. Streamyard doesn't have that limitation, but some of the others uh-huh. do. Yeah, there's definitely mm-hmm. some kind of constraints usually. So we were saying it's um podcastliftoff.com forward slash uh just podcastliftoff.com if you go there. Okay. Yep. Uh, you'll see a little anchor in the bottom right hand corner. And if you click on that anchor, uh, have a question about the course, send me a message. That'll take you to a zip message. And this is my support or pre sale mailbox. And so I have a template here where I pre recorded a video saying, Hey, thanks for your interest in my offerings. You can leave a video, text, or audio message below, uh, and I will get back to you. And then it'll, it'll create a separate um conversation they're called 
where I can have this with a support person. And so I see like there's a question in the chat uh, from Matt. Can you ask a series of questions at once or is it one video at a time? You can do you can format it however you want. There's no limit on the length of the video. Um, and then could you use it for video interview? I, I think yes. Right. So uh, you can go back and forth. Uh, if you go to, I think, um, Brian Castle's website, I'll try to find it. But he conducted a podcast interview, an asynchronous podcast interview with Chris Lemma <laughs> doing this back and forth. So you oh, and you get the, the best answers. You get the thoughtful replies. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. And at first I was like, I don't know how I feel about this because some like part of a good interview is the spontaneity. Yeah. But yep. if I catch someone off guard right now, I don't have to like edit out part of it. Right. They can sit and think about it for a minute. Um, And so, uh, yeah, so you could see how Brian did it. You can see the raw videos. Um, and then he stitched it all together for an actual podcast episode, too. That is that is awesome. I had yeah. not thought about some of these creative ways you've just um, highlighted. Uh, amazing! Yeah. That is so I, super I, cool. I literally, have this is one of those ideas that the moment somebody invented it, you're like, "What? How? How did we not have that?" Because it makes perfect sense. We've got text messages, and they just work. You just drop it in, and when anybody wants to reply, they reply. We've got email. You just send it off. Whenever they're ready to see it and read it and reply, in it comes. And this is exactly the same thing, but it's with video. And I'm guessing that this falls into a hierarchy of a conversation in the UI. So if I if I div if I begin a conversation with you in here, Chris, my video will like maybe your video will come first, followed by mine in a sort of threaded way, and then your yeah. reply and my reply. So you can just go back and walk back through all the steps like an email thread. Yeah, that is that's exactly right. Mm. Um, it's it's super cool. Well done. You can download each of the videos or again the audio, right? So if I want to have a listener feedback show, I can say, hey, submit your audio here. I can just download those and then drop them uh, into the editing track or I could put it on uh, my soundboard so I can play it like during the show. It's really, really mm. a neat tool. When um, when he rolled out the premium, when they rolled out the premium pricing, I signed up almost immediately. I was yeah, like, yeah. this is this is going to replace Loom for me. This this could replace SpeakPipe for me, and then I can I have async office hours for my students too. So um, they have a, a, a private link that kind of gets priority with me. Um, so it's it's super worth it for for me, and it starts at fifteen bucks a month. Yeah, um, if you go for yearly pricing, it's fifteen yeah. So, uh -huh. yeah. fifteen a month, and if you go for the the premium. That's interesting. Look at the way they've added extra padding around the premium one. The, uh, the that's. I'm curious about that. Yeah. Um, oh, what a good eye, right? Yeah. Make it look. Make it, look make a it just bit look longer. a little bit like they're all. There's way more, but <laughs> maybe yeah. there's just not way more. Um, <laughs> but anyway, there you go. This uh, here's my prediction. Mostly anything I predict turns out to be absolute dust. But never mind. Either this is going to get bought out by someone like Facebook or Google or something like that, or one of the big messaging platforms, or there'll be a billion dollar company within a couple of years, and unless somebody does it and does it better. What a genius idea. It's one of those, why didn't I think of yeah. that? Isn't yeah. the creator of this as well? He's from the WordPress space, if I'm right. Yeah, yeah he did, Brian, he did um, um, the he's, restaurant he's, website thing. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, yeah, so he sold that off uh, a while ago. And he do, he has audi audience ops now as well. Mm. Um, he talks a lot about productized services, and this is his latest thing. And this is like, um, this is something that I uh, this is I think is his first product that I was like, yes, I I need this in my life. Yeah, you know, I wasn't completely sold on it until today, and just the way you framed it today was just yep. uh just really opened my eyes to the power of this thing so um i'm going in there and buying this later do you know I'm gonna, what i'm as gonna well. check on your website joe for a, yeah uh, yeah give, give us your special coupons. link joe uh, there's um, no affiliate there's program. no special just let link. brian okay. know that i sent you and, yeah okay yeah. the the other thing as well is if if this product to come out like a year and a half two years ago I don't think the world was ready ready for it, but now mm. everybody's got the webcam and they know how to make it work and they've yeah. sat through those meetings and they're probably True. a proportion of them 
are sick of having to do everything in real time and come and sit down at 9 a.m. exactly 9 a.m. to be in that call at the exact moment it starts. Yep. Now you can achieve the exact same thing, but, you know, at 20 past nine um, because yeah. that's when it suits yeah. you. This is brilliant. We're a nice, yeah. nice catch. Yeah. Um, any more comments just before we finish? Oh, Peter says, um, going back to the, the duck, ravens and, crow, ravens and crows apparently can also be great at mimicking. He says, I'm a big fan of amazingly intelligent corvids. I, I'm guessing corvid is a classification of animal. I've, I've never come across that word, but there we go. Um, ravens and crows sounds like a folk band. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, they played. They, they were in the Lord of the Rings, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, Matt's back with a short comment this time. Yeah, the kind of thing I was imagining it for. That's awesome. I guess he was talking about some of the things that you were mentioning. The async um, interviews. Yep. Yeah. And then he's thinking about using it for testimonials as well, too. We're looking at Bonjoro or other platforms, but this looks lovely. Yeah. With that, Bonjoro is you reach out as a first point, don't you? You go to somebody, like somebody's signed up for your service. You then go straight away. Can I reach out to people? No, of course I can't. No, it has to be initiated by them. To start the zip message, does it? No, you you can reach you out. You start to them. the message. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can start it, or they can start it, which okay. is cool. So, okay. um, yeah. So the way Bonjoro works, right, is you can you can attach it to like your WooCommerce shop, and then when you have a new order, that person's info is added to Bonjoro, and then that's, that's kind of added as like a to do list. Um, Z uh, zip message has uh, Slack integration, so you can get the notification that way. I suspect they're working on Zapier integration because one of the things that I would love to do is um, send like a, like a canned message, a mailbox when somebody signs up for, let's say my coaching, right? Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks so much for signing up for the coaching, blah, blah, blah. Here are a few initial questions. If you just want to send a video and then that kind of gets them into the habit of doing it asynchronously instead of grabbing a time, right? Cause that's ultimately uh, that's ultimately the thing that's totally worth. Even if I use this once a month, um, it's like totally worth the 19 or whatever, 38 bucks that I'm paying for it because it saves me the dance. It saves me the slot, right? The hour long slot on my calendar. Um, and I use it for yeah. a bunch of other things too. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Honestly, brilliant catch. I'm so glad. Just for that reason alone, that was, um, that was brilliant. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, I've got nothing else. There's no more comments as far as I can see. I've got a pick of the week. Have you? Yeah, Is that yeah, the one you just put the uh, the link in for? Might be, might be. But first, I just want to say uh, our friend Maya Lonkar sent me a message on email this morning oh. and uh, sent me this catalog where I could choose some GoDaddy swag, Go GoDaddy Pro swag. So I've got a new, um, new backpack and some other cool stuff coming along in, in the post from, from GoDaddy Pro. But I just want to say this. If GoDaddy Pro think that they can buy me and have me announce their stuff on my friend's podcast by just giving me some swag, then they are absolutely right. Because here we go. Of, <laughs> because my pick of the week, if you could bring up the link, Nathan, if you could bring there yourself to do that. Wait a sec. There we go. <laughs> Speaking of, well, here's cool. the thing. So, you know, we talk a lot about acquisitions at the moment, and they have – a um one of their meetups this evening i think it is yet yeah, september 13th uh six this evening in uk time i think it's 6 p.m uk time and i i don't know the um the person i've not heard of the person before marcel sobieski uh but this talk is called from ideas to multiple sellable wp businesses so the whole talk is about if you've got an idea how you can launch that as a, as a business within the WordPress space with a view that you want to exit that business at some point and perhaps sell it in the current um, climate that we have. So um, it's the kind of thing that, um, you know, our friend Chris, uh, Chris Hughes might be interested in watching. Chris, I know, is a serial solo and entrepreneur and um you know has businesses in the the wordpress space and this is this is a talk from somebody who's done it four times apparently so they've kind of exited four wordpress brands uh, successfully so that's i think this evening at 6 p.m um uk time and i guess that i'm not sure what time it is in different places but uh check it out if you go to the easiest way to find it is just go to events.godaddy.com 
Yeah. And you'll find and you'll find right all their different the meetups. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. just put it on the screen. Uh from ideas to multiple resellable WP businesses. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paul. Um I'll uh, I'll I'll have half of that backpack, please, when it arrives. <laughs> Could I have the bottom half? Um, you can best, just have the top bit that everybody, yeah. everything falls out of. Uh, uh, right. Vegas has got a quick question as well. Yeah, I know. I see that. And I was just saying yeah. we've got like six minutes left. So let's use it up with Matt yep. Davis's final question, which is unlike we've ever had before because it, it's all about um, Joe's course, which is great. She's asking a question about Joe's course. He says, Joe, re your... Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> go on, Matt. Keep the comments long. <laughs> um, if I have an existing podcast... So we're talking about Joe's podcast course. I think if I have an existing podcast that was put on hold while we were busy and I'm looking to restart again, would your course be good, even if I'm not specifically looking to monetize it? Um, and sorry, <laughs> sorry says, if that obliterates Paul's face. <laughs> And then he ah. says, the, it cut off half a bit of his message, but the rest of his message said, "Thank you." he's trying to get into being consistent with it and hopefully streamline processes. So stuff about Damn processes. It. If it had put that whole comment up, your entire face would have been covered. Yeah. That's yeah, a no. shame, isn't it? <laughs> Joe, over to you. What is yeah, it? Uh, so yeah, Matt, what? thanks so much for the question. Uh, yes, so the full podcast liftoff course uh, includes, so the, the light version, like the $79 version, um, is kind of just getting started, right? From like idea to publish or launch. Uh, but the additional modules in the 199 version uh, include um, my process for staying consistent, right? So how to come up with content and batch content and things like that. Uh, it talks a little bit about automation um, and, and some of my automation processes because I'm a one-man band here. Uh, well, the, uh, as the showrunner, I'm the one man band, and then I I can automate out to a couple of other people to do a few other things, um, and then there is a monetization part, and it's not just about sponsorships; it's about a few other ways to uh, generate income that includes like selling your services. And between uh, between us, just here on the podcast, uh, over the next quarter, uh, I've come up with a kind of a new framework to. Um, to apply to this course, it's called the clean framework, right? Um, create, mm. launch, earn, automate, and network. And so I'll be adding some new content to that over the next couple of months uh, that focuses more on uh, deeply on automation and, and, and money making. But yeah, there's a whole set of videos there that's just staying consistent. Um, and and then the automation stuff that streamlines the process. Because honestly, I wouldn't be able to do what I do um, if uh, if I didn't at least automate some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. a great long answer. That was lovely. So hopefully, mm -hmm. Matt, you've um, you've managed to get everything you need to know there. Where's the? If I'm I'm guessing Matt probably wants to take this conversation elsewhere. Best best channel for you, Joe. Uh, you can uh, head over to zipmessage.com <laughs> yeah yeah we saw oh so you got you just got joe did you yeah i <laughs> i uh, got to be a beta tester um and then he said when they rolled out um custom urls i grabbed slash joe and then brian was like we were gonna put a limit uh, um, a minimum limit of four characters on you snuck in, uh, and I I snuck in there. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, I'm pretty psyched on it. Yeah, yeah, that is good. Yeah. The uh, it sounds like you've oh yay! Victory. Whoa, there! It is. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> yay! Total result. Can we just keep that comment on until the very end? That sounds fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. We have digital projects education business uh, that the podcast fits around. Hence, why I'm not looking to monetize with ads or anything. But new customer is always good. Much appreciated. Bye, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading that comment. I was like, why is he said by Paul? <laughs> That's <laughs> why. I didn't but know why that. Didn't, why yeah. didn't the previous one like, go all know. the way? That game no, is very, the cool oh, thing is, no. very clever spacing. Is yeah, I wonder I if it's carriage returns there. and things like that. Yeah. Anyway, we've used up enough of everybody's time today. This show is over. Um, thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week. Probably got some interesting news for you next week about the way I the podcast. I don't think we are back next week. Are we not? No. I oh, no, you're right. After. I've got to go yeah. and do something um, elsewhere. You're absolutely right. Thank mm -hmm. you, Paul. So we'll be sure back in a couple right of weeks. Date, though. Sure Stop it. This is not a fishing expedition. <laughs> um, you're going to laugh back. at me when my face gets covered up. Then I'm yeah, going to keep swinging right, this yeah. up over Fair and over enough. again. 
Yeah, I must say you were very, very good about not absolutely ripping me to bits about mm. that during this show this week. Thank you, um, Francisco. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate that very much. He says, well done. And I've, well, uh, that time. Okay, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Um, please share if you've got any, if you've had any thoughts on this, please share it with your friends, colleagues, Romans, countrymen, whoever. And uh, we'll be back and we'll have some interesting news about it. Can I get all of us to wave so that I can use it as the album art? We're not going to have to fade out this time, but if we can just hold it like that, that's brilliant. And I'll use that. And we'll say bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>